Now, I was thinking about what I would do today if I was going to put together a law school application. And I thought about various stories from my life, my previous experiences, and how I would put them together into different parts of the application. So I've got three stories, and I'll just walk through them briefly with you to show how they could fit into those buckets of personal statement, character and fitness, diversity statement, and how I chose to bucket them and bracket them that way. You might do it differently. These, sta- these stories are my stories. They're not yours. But I've been working to get a little bit more comfortable in getting more personal, which is not something I'm usually very comfortable doing. But I think that especially if I'm helping all of you with your personal statements, I've got to do, be willing to do that work myself too, just to see how it feels to go deep like that because it can get uncomfortable because these are really things that you went through. And then to kind of use them for a personal statement can feel a little bit icky sometimes and feel like you're not really doing it justice. But you got to get over it. That's the thing. You got to get over it because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for you to share another side of yourself, even and they're, they're, even if it feels uncomfortable for you. And they're, they're reading hundreds of these. They're reading thousands of these. And it's important to make it personal so it stands out and so it's not boring. So when I see resumes, when I see people laundry listing things, that's boring. People are typically either bragging about things or it's just kind of objective. And the personal statement is really more about getting subjective it's through your lens. It might, be, it might not be correct. It might not be right from an objective perspective. It may even feel like this is going to hurt you in some way, but you've got to get vulnerable. And talking about failures is okay. It's about, again, what you learn from the experience. So here's one story that I'll share. And this is a story that, I, that came to mind for me as being a personal statement. So I would talk about how I'd spent years teaching classes in person, but a couple of years ago, I started forcing myself to get comfortable being comfortable on video. And you might think that having thousands of followers on social or on a YouTube channel means that you somehow made it. But the truth is that it can actually be quite lonely sometimes. Most people think the numbers mean you've made it and that it's all that. But in reality, it can get worse the more successful that you become. Because all these online platforms, they're engineered to getting you obsessed over likes and feedback to the point where I would have to force myself not to check it right before I go to bed or right after I wake up to be looking at the comments to see I post something a little bit edgy. What's the feedback? What's the response? They bake it into that and it's really hard to get away from that. So I've had to force myself to distance in that area. And I've gotten some hate at times for things I've said about the LSAT's importance or about supporting Black Lives Matter. And it can be really hurtful when people leave those nasty comments. So I've been working deliberately to ignore the hateful feedback, to avoid focusing on that, that can suck you back into constantly checking for everything and instead simply focus on putting out useful information. And what I found most fulfilling is really, aside from the numbers, that really doesn't matter at all. It's not real. Is being on live calls with students and getting to know them, helping them to achieve their dreams in these one-on-one relationships are more powerful than anything else I've ever encountered. And I'd rather measure my success from that not the number of views or the number of likes. So that's one idea that came to mind. It might not be my perfect personal statement, but that's a starting point. Those are just some notes I drafted up really quickly before this call, because that's something that's been on my mind a lot lately. And it's real, it's raw. That's where I'd be going with that. Now I've got another story. This story is my character and fitness story. And it involves me getting suspended from college for two years when I had a party where we accidentally started a fire because we were wasted. This was drunken foolishness. And it feels really raw for me to be sharing this right now. I'm 35 now. This happened back when I was 20, but it still feels edgy for me to share this. I feel like I could get destroyed over this in some way. For a law school personal statement, I would have to disclose this because I was arrested and being suspended was on my disciplinary record. So I would have to talk about this. Would I want to make this the focus of my personal statement? Something stupid I did nearly like 15 years ago? I probably wouldn't want to. I could talk about how during those two years off from college, I studied for the LSAT, I started teaching it, but I think that a story like that would be better for a separate essay focusing on the beginnings of my LSAT career. But I wouldn't want to make the focus of my personal statement a story about something stupid I did when I was drunk that had a massive consequence for me. I also wouldn't want to be looking to make excuses for it, like sophomore year of college was really tough, or I had one too many jello shots. I wouldn't want to think about that. I would say very matter-of-factly, 
here's what I did. I exercised poor judgment. Here's what I learned during those two years. Matter of fact, simple, not 500, 600 words, maybe 300 words. And it would be really hard for me to cram that into only 300 words, but I would have to do it. I would maybe write a thousand words and then very slowly cut it down so that every word counted. I'd be looking at every prepositional phrase, every detail, and making tough choices about what to remove. Now I have a third statement, and this would be a diversity statement. And there are a number of routes one could take about this. I think everybody has multiple things that they could use for a diversity statement. One that comes to mind for me is my own personal spiritual journey. How for a while, I was a hardcore atheist. I underwent a sort of spiritual awakening a few years ago. My path included yoga, meditation, deep work in therapy, and multiple ayahuasca ceremonies under the supervision of shamans in the Amazon. All of this led me to reconsider a lot of previously held beliefs. It would be a wake-up call of sorts. Now, I would be very careful about how I did this because spirituality is edgy. It's a, it's a polarizing topic. Talking about psychedelic, psychedelic therapy is not for everybody. You don't want them to think that you're going, that you're going to abuse drugs. I'm not certainly endorsing that anybody use drugs in any way. I'm just sharing a detail about my personal experience. I might leave that detail out. I might, not be, I might not be totally sure about whether to include it or not. I'd probably talk to multiple current and former admission officers about how exactly whether to disclose a detail like that or not, and I wouldn't make it the focus. But I would include it perhaps because it was the culmination of my journey in that area. But even if I removed it, simply talking about yoga, meditation, deep work and therapy, that alone could be useful. Now, I wouldn't aim, I wouldn't aim to make excuses about things. I wouldn't aim to sugarcoat anything. And I would work very carefully about all the wording and all the details, but it's more about showing how all of those experiences give me a unique perspective, given other things that most people haven't undergone. Now, a couple of things I thought of including, but chose not to. One is about growing up in an abusive household, feeling trapped and how that's impacted me. Now, why didn't I include this? Because I was concerned maybe it could show up as looking for pity. Maybe it's kind of depressing. Instead, if I were to include this, I would talk about how this matured me and what I learned from that experience. But I would think really hard and carefully about, is that the best story I want to tell? Even if it's very important to me, is it serving the purpose of the application specifically? Another story about how I've backpacked and hitchhiked in the Middle East alone for months at a time. Could I talk about that? Sure. Is it unique? Yeah. Is it maturing in various ways? Is it, do I encounter challenges there? Yeah, but it's traveling and lots of people travel. It's not necessarily that unique. They read tons of travel essays all the time and it may not seem different enough. So I decided to leave it out for that reason. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them and feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.